Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm your host, Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com, and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. The topic, the only man you should be dating, this only this type of man. All right, really quickly before we get started, if you've been seeking help, you want some advice, and you're going, God, I'd love to get the male perspective, then do me a favor and click the link below to schedule, schedule a discovery call to see if working with a coach might benefit you. Okay, our topic, the only man you should be dating. This is the only man, this one type of man. All right, um, I've observed there's really three kinds of people in the world, and I'm, I'm sure this is gonna resonate with you. Um, I think there are givers, I think there are takers, and then I think there's people kind of in the middle. And from the respects to the takers, which I'm sure a lot of you women have felt like you've been in relationship with a taker. In other words, you've given, 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 and this person doesn't reciprocate in the giving. And giving is different for each person, but for the most part, it's actually what I think investing in the relationship. And if you've been following my videos, I often talk about meeting at the 50 yard line. In other words, you're meeting at the 50 yard line. And for a lot of people, I mean, two people meeting at the 50 yard line. A lot of people and a, a lot of you women have experienced men who are here at the 10 yard line and you keep giving, 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 and he's not meeting you at the 50 yard line. So to me, that person that's here and you're here at the 50 yard line, but now you're, you're giving, giving more to get him to come over. He's actually what I believe to be a taker. And in other words, if he's accepting your generosity, if he's accepting your kindness, if he's accepting and not reciprocating, not investing equally into the relationship. Now, there's a second type of guy or girl, because everything I talk about goes both ways. This is not singular to men, even though all my titles are driven towards men. Um, that's partially just to get you to click. OK, but this is goes both ways. But I think there's some people that are just absolutely ambivalent in relationship. They're ambivalent. In other words, they're not takers. They're not. T but they're just clueless. In fact, I think a big majority of men are what I call good people, but they're just bad daters. They're just clueless and they just need a little bit of direction to get them to come to the 50 yard line. But that's not always the case. But the man, but not but, and what I believe is you want to date the following type of man, the type of man that I call a giver. And this isn't new. I'm not the one who invented, you know, choosing to date men who are givers, but I'm here to say that a giver is more likely to be a better candidate to be in relationship with than certainly those ambivalent men and who are takers. So now you might be going, okay, Jonathan, how do I tell if a man's a giver? Okay, and I think this is a great question. So I was talking to a client earlier today and um, she was interacting with a man who lived, I believe there was about 40 minutes from each other. And he planned the first date near his own home, okay, which happened to be even five miles further than the, the halfway point between them. So in other words, she was gonna have to drive 45 minutes. I think he lives 40 minutes from her house. And to me, that's a person who's either ambivalent or unconscious or they're a taker. In other words, they're making everything convenient for themselves. And a real giver would have said, hey, let's pick a place near your home. That's a genuine giver. That's a person who's conscious and aware of your needs, wants, and desires. Let me give you another example. Um, well, I'm going to share something personal. This one is a personal experience. This is the first woman I dated after my divorce. And while it didn't work out, I have fond memories of her. Um, it didn't work out because I was a total train wreck. I was a total train wreck. Um, she should have never dated me. I was a mess after my divorce, but we'll get into that onto another uh, video. But one of the things um, I noticed when I visited her home, she drank a certain type of bottled water or, and now I can't even remember the name of it. it. I think it was called Penta or something like that or something close to that. So when she visited my home, I made sure to have the same bottled water at my house. 
because I wanted her to feel happy. This was me demonstrate being a giver to a relationship. And I'm here to say, start thinking of men who are givers. Start paying attention to they how they show up. Are they paying attention to you and going, like for example, you're driving in the car and they're like, hey, is the air conditioning too cold for you? That's what a giver does. They're conscientious of the other person. They're not like, oh, I need it to be cold for me. So I crank up the AC, not recognizing that you're wearing a skimpy dress and he's got a full blown coat on, you know? It's being conscious and aware of the other person. That's what a giver is. And that's the type of man you should be dating. That's my, my invitation for you. In fact, if you're not familiar with the book, are you the one for me are you the one for me by barbara DeAngelis. she outlines a great strategy on how to pick a better partner in fact much of my my private coaching is centered around these principles the only difference in the private coaching is this is a generalized thing and private coaching is specific to your needs and you get the benefit of them the male perspective you know, I get to see your blind spots from a guy's point of view and not from a woman's point of view. But I highly recommend checking out the book, Are You the One for Me? by Barbara DeAngelis. Along with, let me make a shameless plug for my own book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Because we all need more self-love. We all need more self-love. I, when I say need more, the more we love on ourselves, the better we choose. And the more we're, we're able to decipher if someone is ambivalent or a taker versus the giver. Because the only person you should be dating is a giver. And start paying attention to the clues very early on. Because they're there. Is he being mindful of your needs? And, and not putting you up on a pedestal is what I mean, but just sincerely going, oh, let me think about her from her perspective. Because I know, for example, where to pick a date. That's something I always think, let me make it convenient for her because when I make it easy for her, I think she's gonna be more apt to be appreciative of me. And that's my invitation. Ah, uh, okay, I think you get the gist of where I'm going. Only date a giver. Only date this type of man who's a giver. All right. If you're new to my YouTube channel, click the link below to uh, subscribe and click the bell so you can get notified of new content. And if you don't know me, I always end with a big hug of self-love for myself. And then I give you a big gigantic hug of love and I ask you to turn to someone next to you and give them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks so much and wishing you a super duper wonderful day. Bye-bye now.